Welcome to the Property Voice Podcast, helping you to navigate safely through the world of property investing. Get the lowdown and updates, insights and outcomes on all matters property with a splash of entertainment along the way. The Property Voice, a voice to trust among the crowd. Now, let's get started with your host, Richard Brown. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Property Voice podcast. My name is Richard Brown and as always, it's a pleasure to have you join me again on the show today. Now I interrupt the current series briefly to share an update on my own book reading challenge which uh, which I've been undergoing throughout the course of 2015. So listen in as I share some of the highlights among the 44 books that I managed to read or listen to during the year. And I select my top three a few other notable mentions, and we also have some listener suggestions as well. Then I'll give you back some time so you can focus on planning your goals for 2016, including a copy of the Property Investor Roadmap infographic to all listeners of the show as my gift to you. But first up, let's get on with the book reading challenge as we discuss it in Property Chatter. Okay, so let's get on with this week's featured topic with Property Chatter. Now at the start of this year, I set myself a reading challenge to read or listen to at least two books per month, so 24 in total for the year. Now I managed to surpass that target in the summer and so I set what I call an elastic goal of 36 for the year. And I'm happy to say that by the end I managed to get through quite an amazing or staggering number of 44 books in total throughout the year. Now I usually have a paperback, a Kindle book and an audio book on the go at the same time which allows me to read in different situations I find. And I've been amazed at how many of the books that I've read this year and and, and indeed how, how much of an impact they've had on me. Several have led to significant changes in my thinking and indeed my behavior as well. In the show notes I list out all 44 titles for you to peruse at your leisure. Suffice to say Sanj Korea, a property investor stalwart invited me to list my top book of the year along with the reason why. And this was <laughs> this was an almost impossible task as there were so many that I really enjoyed or found invaluable in one way or another. Needless to say, here are my top three books for 2015 along with the reasons why. And in reverse order then, here are my top three books of the year. Coming in at number three is The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. And the key idea is that it's about turning adversity, obstacles and challenges into advantages, lessons and victory. It's an insight into the stoic philosophy at the same time. And what an awesome read. I had not not really heard about the stoic philosophy as such, apart from real life phrases like grin and bear it, soldier on, or from my beloved Birmingham City's anthem, keep right on. It sounds, you know, bloody miserable, I know, and perhaps I've not done it justice with these sound bites, to be fair, but it really is a good book, I can tell you. And I was so taken by it that I've added several of the author's recommended reading list to my own wish list now, Marcus Aurelius, Robert Greene, and so on. A book of philosophy, but also a strategy, one of self-mastery and also one of wisdom. Definitely one of my uh, top books of 2015. Coming in at number two is The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. And the key idea is that um, it's outrageously simple. Start your day in the right way and all the rest will follow. Motivation, success, personal trans- transformation even. Bold claims indeed. But guess what? Hal Rel- Elrod might just be right. Once in a while a book comes along that is a game changer or a mindset shifter. And for me this came in up there with Covey's Seven Habits as a personal development masterpiece. I don't want to go into enormous detail but the so-called life savers outlined in the book build on many of the ingredients of success spanning, well, as far back as you want to go really. The promise is to have a, a morning routine from 6 to 60 minutes that will set you up perfectly for your day. You may gather by now that I have been quite impacted by this book. The savers, which is silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading and scribing, collect together many time-honored, if less well-applied, personal success ingredients. 
an easy listen and because obviously I listen to it <laughs> and Hal's personal story is inspiration enough I mean the guy was dead for six minutes after her horrific, uh, horrific car crash he was told he would never walk again he had brain damage it's an amazing story in itself over time Hal rebuilt his life and did so by applying what became known as the miracle morning now I, I had experimented with many aspects of the savers as he describes them over the years but failed to find a system that allowed me to make them stick in my routine the miracle morning helps me to do this and helps everyone to do this and as a result of the miracle morning I found a routine that works for me I'm getting up much earlier I've managed to stick with disciplines like meditation where I could not before and I've uncovered a whole bunch of apps and tools to aid my learning and development some of which I found through the book and some myself as a result of making further inquiries in conclusion then it's a must read so there we go the first uh, two of the top three but coming in at number one my favorite book of the of the whole year is the chimp paradox by professor Steve Peters now to simplify and abridge slightly we all have three sides to us a rational human a pre-programmed computer and one heck of a reckless and at times out of control chimp as well and if you ever wondered why sometimes you do the exact opposite to what you know you should or you have regrets for something you did or said later then this book will help to explain the psycho uh, psychological rather phenomenon that is co in a completely understandable way it's a game change of a book at least for me and this has been one of my all-time favorite most useful books probably ever perhaps for the first time I now get it why I can do things like consume an entire bar of chocolate without thinking when I'm on a health drive or drink too much such that I black out despite the fact that this is clearly dangerous territory to be or even the or even why the hackles on the back of my neck start to rise when someone starts to say that they may not fully agree with my well-considered rational and obviously correct perspective <laughs> it's a modern day psychology classic and I only wish it had been written and of course read by me when I was 19 years old doing doing some of the things I described earlier the language and style is straightforward but full of relatable analogies like the planets in the solar system and the audio version that that I got was was read by the author himself which was nice I would say that at times all the different systems and analogies did confuse me just a little bit as I found I was having to remember something abstract in terms of description to understand an abstract topic in the first place but it's not a big deal really I have to say Without any shadow of a doubt though, this has to be a must read book for anyone with the slightest interest in people, human behavior and self understanding. It's a real classic. So that's it. My top three books of 2015 with the chimp paradox coming in at number one. However, as I mentioned earlier, I have really enjoyed many of the books that I read this year. So here are some other notable mentions as well. First of all, I have to give uh, mention to the 18 year property cycle by Akil Patel it's the best property book I read this year and it's not in my top three as technically it's not actually a book it's more of a, an ebook if you like that you can get available from uh, Akil's website at Ascendant Strategy next is The Go-Giver by Berg and Mann it's another kind of parable storybook that illustrates how people who give and serve usually end up with more next we've got How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World by Harry Brown and this is in the list mainly as it is it both shocked me and it stirred up some of my deepest values at the same time an uncomfortable read to begin with I almost put it down but I'm glad I persevered and in fact I have actually applied some of the principles that he was talking about rather shockingly I have to say then we've got the millionaire fast lane by MJ DeMarco it's a book about achieving wealth through different types of business model and it was recommended to me by Carl Gilbert a listener of the show then we got The Values Factor by Dr. John Demartini and it's a book about purpose, alignment and following your true direction in life. It almost made the top three and perhaps the only reason why, why it didn't was due to its length and slight repeti repetition rather as a result. Finally I would probably have to give mention to Total Recall by Arnie himself or Arnold Schwarzenegger to give him his proper title it's a frank illuminating and inspiring autobiography and I highly recommend it and if you didn't know he also made his first million through property as well so it's a property book really <laughs> in all honesty there are many many books on the list that I've read this year that I highly recommend 
Some I plan to reread next next year as well, as I modify my reading to mix and match between new material and covering some older material again to soak it all up. So watch this space as I as I translate and, and share my reading challenge for 2016. Now though, let's hear from some of our listeners about their book recommendations. Up next is your voice. It's all about you and your property world. Now I invited you to make some recommendations of your own this week and, and here are some of the book suggestions that I have received through my interactions. First of all we have Adrian Bond who said The Slight Edge Was Great by Jeff, Jeff Olson. All the little things you do each day add up quickly to a bright future. And then Scott, Scott Elliott, he said the one that struck me the most this year was actually a recommendation from you Richard, The Richest Man in Babylon. It really kick-started the change in my thought process around money. Also, The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. I don't agree with everything he says, but I am now hooked on his podcast radio show. Peter Damick, 10x by Grant Cardone, was eye-opening for setting massive goals, having vision and being fired up to execute in this. Alan Christie, who said, The 4-Hour Workweek by Timothy Ferris was the best book I read, and indeed reread in 2015. Sanj Career, the, uh, the inspiration behind this musings episode. He said, My favourite book was The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. And why? It's the book that added the most value to me by giving me focus. A really good practical guide. Then Mark Morris who says, uh, well, who gave actually two recommendations. First one was Getting Things Done by David Allen. He loves this book. It's one of the very few books, including Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that I have read twice. The book gives you as many great tips and advice on how to manage your workload and be as productive as possible. I've implemented a couple of things, i.e. do it, delegate it, drop it or defer, has been a real game changer, along with managing emails more efficiently. And his second book was Escape the Rat Race with Property Lease Options from Barry Davies. Barry Davies. Again, a great property book and a book for newbies and property experts. I really have begun to understand how powerful and useful for both buyer and seller lease options can be. I now realise a couple of off-market deals I have been to see previously could have been perfect for lease options. And he goes on to ask some questions about lease options of me, which uh, I might well indeed use uh, to share in a future episode or a segment in an episode at least about lease options in particular. So thanks, Mark. And then Rob Moore, I, I exchanged notes about his quite impressive reading list for the year. If you wanted to look that up, um, he read a few more than 44 is all I would like to say. But I asked him what his top three spiritual books were because I'm quite interested in uh, exploring that type of theme myself. And he he listed uh, he listed three books and I'm going to give the titles and not necessarily the uh, the authors. And if you look the authors up, you'll probably see why some of them are pretty hard to pronounce. The first one is The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. I can't pronounce this one, it's Deepak Chopra. The next one was Flow, Good Business. And this one I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce for you. <laughs> and the third one was Inspiring Your Life by John D. Martini. Oh, it's Dr. John D. Martini, isn't it? But I did say last time out that I'd be giving away a copy of my own book, Property Investor Toolkit, to three listeners. Now, one of these would have been Mark Morris, although he said he was happy to buy a copy instead. So thanks for that, Mark. However you want one as a gift uh, for some reason, or sorry, for someone else, just let me know. Now I have to make special mention as well to Sanj Career, who not only suggested this episode and then contributed to it, but is also such a prolific contributor to the show with suggestions and ideas throughout the year, so thanks Sanj. Now I didn't want to have to split hairs and make three books out of the contributors that I've had or contributions that I've had, so Mark, Sanj, Adrian, Scott, Piotr, Alan and even Rob can all have a copy if they'd like one. I know some of you already have a copy, so maybe it can be a gift for somebody else, so you can have that with my compliments. And thank you very much for your contributions all. My reading list has just got a little bit bigger as a result. <laughs> Thanks very much. And now, where you can go for more great resources with a shout out. Now, today's shout out is quite straightforward, really. As we're near the end of 2015, we are no doubt starting to look ahead into 2016. And that means goal setting time, doesn't it? So I'd like to help you along the way by sharing with you a copy of the Property Investor Roadmap Infographic. And this sets out a simple way to plan ahead in what we call the SPEAR Life Plan. 
the right property strategy that is aligned to your personal life plan and the pillars of success or the four P's that will underpin the whole thing as well. It's yours with my compliments. Just email me podcast at thepropertyvoice.net if you'd like a copy to aid in your property gold setting for 2016. There we go then, the final episode of the Property Voice podcast this year. I'd like to wish you a very happy, healthy and prosperous new year. Let's make 2016 the year when it comes to our property investing journey, shall we? So let's join me again next week as we return to the Property Cycle series and we'll continue to look at the property investment life cycle, looking more closely at the acquire phase once again. Meanwhile, the show notes will be over at the website, thepropertyvoice.net. But thank you very much for listening, not only this week, but also during the course of this year. But for now, and until next time on the Property Voice podcast, it's ciao, ciao. Thank you for listening today. Now head over to thepropertyvoice.net for more inspirational content and get updates through our mailing list. Join us next time on the Property Voice podcast. And if you enjoyed the show, please don't forget to rate us on iTunes.